I was saying to my friend, I was driving out here this morning and having done the drive countless times. And I was mm. saying, you know, I can't remember ever dreading coming. Mm -mm. Yes, I've had, I'm sure you had some surpassingly difficult days, <laughs> but I don't remember ever being like, oh. Never. Miles Perkins, who worked here for a while, uh, said that the thing with ILM is that nobody ever gets caught in the gears. If you had a problem, y you could go to somebody or a group of people who would be right there to right. help you because right. nobody wanted anybody to hang up to dry. And there was this incredible sharing of like, this is, it, there was never a sense of like, this is my information. Yes. Uh, so I don't know that there's ever been anywhere like it in that sense of just how, uh, how to solve problems. Jean, when you first came to ILM, was this the, the shop you worked in? This was in existence, but it was not the shop I worked in. No. No. When I first came here, was Willow was the first. Willow. Show. And uh, the model shop at that time was, you know, about a half a block walk from here. And then it, mo it eventually moved here. Oh, it moved all over the show. Yeah, and it was I, like I was in at least three different buildings. <laughs> I don't think that I ever did model making here. I remember Joe Bob Fulmer at his welding bay right yeah. over there. And I think a lot of the metal that's outside there yeah. is from Joe Bob's oh, well. I think, yeah, it's original stuff out there. Tell me about the, tell me about the culture you found when you first started working here. Well, it really, it, it, it absolutely came, from, and I think in a very unique way, it came from the top. And that's because we had people like Lauren and Charlie Bailey and, the, and Dennis, and the people who were here were so uh, incredibly good and yet so low ego that it just set the standard for all of us to, to, to have that kind of relationship with each other, where we felt comfortable in this, you know, any of us, we knew kind of when to speak, but we were welcomed. Our opinions were welcomed in the D screening room, which was right over there. So you fight there. hard for your ideas, but you could also let them go collaboratively uh, yes. when it was necessary. Absolutely, and that the sense was that you had to be good to work here. Like that was kind of an, a, a given. Right. So you had a, the right to, uh, you know, they welcomed your, Dennis welcomed contributions. Interesting. Yeah, but on the other hand, we also knew like, the, th this is the opinion that matters and when to speak about it. But it was like family, right. you know? Do you have a, a favorite thing, a favorite project you worked on while you were working in the physical model department? Well, Willow was of course huge yeah. because yeah. that was the first thing I did here. And um, to walk into this place that looked so nondescript. <laughs> I, I remember looking through the window at the Kerner, yeah. Yeah, I thought there'd be like stormtroopers, you know, <laughs> big, and, and, and a gate that you go through and security kind of, and, and here I was, I was like, where, this, I, can't, I must be in the wrong place. Yeah, I thought, yeah. Um, but that was, that was a wonder, and also that introduced me to the computer graphics department. My first show was actually made those links. Interesting. Uh, because they were doing the very first morph what became a morph right and so um I, I i got to know them and i got curious about what they were doing so you were curious from the very get-go oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> well it was all very mysterious over there yeah. and also the other thing i was very jealous because the guys that were running doug Smythe and his team would come over and hang out in the model shop and watch me when i was building the models mm -hmm. for like a long time you know they'd be kind of lounging around and i'd say like, what are you what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're rendering. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that sounded that's like a, a nice job. Gig. <laughs> <laughs> you just get to go have long lunch breaks and check in every once in a while. But I got, you know, yeah, I, I made connections with the, with that team of people uh, at the same time that I mean, my home was the model shop. Yeah. So, you know, but I got to track that history kind of firsthand as well. Dave Fogler told me uh, after he had fully inculcated the CG mindset that it, carried with it all the same satisfactions of physical model making to him, like of problem solving, aesthetic completion and stuff like that. I'm curious how you feel in the building of stuff between the virtual and the actual. Well, I found it to be like, to me, it was the same sense of like, if I got a good render, I had a good day. If, yeah. I, if there was a good dailies and, and my stuff got on the screen and it looked good, I was having a good day. Yeah. If not, no, you know, and I wasn't <laughs> gonna sleep that night and we were gonna fix it. And yeah. um, because, well, also the other thing was that there was always, always a sense at ILM that it was gonna be the best possible work and um, oh, in front and behind all like the time. everything you finished should be all of us 
you know, that was that th there wasn't any other possibility. That was like an institutional pride. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yes, I could really get a great sense of accomplishment when I saw my stuff on the screen, whether it was CG or model. But I also have to say that I found computers frustratingly stupid because <laughs> you had to give them everything. Right. <laughs> they can't extrapolate. Uh, no. So you had to tell it where it's sweaty, where it's dark, where it's the gray, where the hair turns, yeah. where it bends, where the, you know, all of that stuff, the rust and all the components of that. And where it is you come in the model shop and you you throw paint on something and spritz it with alcohol and it it would give you something back yeah. immediately. Yes, you're right. And I kind of, you know, now that I'm not working in CG anymore, I'm kind of really enjoying the serendipity that we all shared. The other thing I find interesting, Adam, though, is I think every single time there is an innovation in CG, it's an attempt to get around the computer and get back to the organic thing. Oh, interesting. To capture reality um, and, and make it sim as simple as possible. Right to have that transfer directly to the screen. And because in the beginning, we just had to unpack so many things and then put them back to comp them all back together right, right, again. Right. And each innovation seems to be an attempt to try to lessen the, the point A to point Z of, of, of CG right. to make it more like it was in the model shop. Dennis always said that, he was like, go look at what's real. Look at nature. I mean, he brought elephants here for us to, you know, study on, on a dress. He would, <laughs> he was very, very keen on that. And uh, I always carried that around because not only are you going to learn, and but you will make something far cooler and far weirder yeah. if you look at what's actually out there. I, the, I was one of the very first hired on episode two, and George sent a team of us to Fantasy Junction in Oakland just to look under the hoods of some classic cars. That was his aesthetic, like, here's how we're going to start this project. Go look at a bunch of engines. Absolutely. And then I'm sure you found all sorts of surprising things when you oh, did that. Oh, absolutely. Because it happens every single time yeah. when you go look at something Because real. reality is way weirder than I would think. Way. There was a Jaguar with 12 cylinders and three carburetors. And I was like, a four barrel, three sets of four barrel carbs. Like it was, the layout was absurd. And I found out that the carbs were more valuable than the car. Because they'd only ever built 1,200 of those and they built more of the E-types. Well, Adam, that's very you. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't totally relate to looking under the hood of cars and being astonished by them. But I can totally relate to catching a fish and putting it on a light table and watching what happens when you rotate it and to see how it kicks light off the scales. And, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. you're going to learn. And, and, yeah, so ILM really instilled that in us, uh, right? In, you know, th through from model to CG. And you are currently keeping a desk here. Yes, You're, I am. This is a studio. That's beautiful. It's a big old circle. <laughs> and I'm back, I'm back, this is home. Yeah. This is home, there isn't a square foot of this place that isn't like completely deep in memories. Mm -hmm. And some of them are famous things that happen and yeah. some of them are uh, Cheerio commercials. Yeah. But we put as much care and effort into those commercials and you know like I did a cat litter commercial that was a high point for me <laughs> because that was how you know, every job had to have you had to bring that course, to every single yeah. thing you did yeah and so that's all around us here Jean thank you so much for sharing that I really appreciate that pleasure thank you. <laughs>